Okay, so for our show here today, we're only talking about bulería that originates from Jerez de la Frontera. And even then, it offers a world of music, culture, and understanding. So now we're going to talk about Jerez de la Frontera. I've been there eight different times in my life. And um, you say, really, it's amazing, but there are two famous neighborhoods um, in Jerez. And it took me multiple trips to realize this as well. Um, Gary, can you tell us about the two famous barrios where all the cante comes from? Oh, hey. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's there's two uh, neighborhoods where where the Roma or the Gypsy people they congregated in Jerez mostly, and one is called Santiago, and the other is called San Miguel, which they're both named after the ma- major big Catholic church in each neighborhood, and San Miguel is also they call La Plazuela. Also, and why do they call it that? Well, because there's a kind of an emblematic plaza there, you know, where two streets come together, and um, yeah, a lot of the famous singers grew up around and that, they have their that area of the of that close to that plaza, and um, so those are the two neighborhoods, and they have kind of a friendly rivalry, even though it's about a 15 minute walk from one to the other. <laughs> Sometimes you'd think it was 100 miles or something because they have this rivalry and, you know, we're better than you and this and that. And they do have slightly different styles, different air to their to their cante and to their uh, singing, with the uh, San Miguel being slightly more earthy, slightly more maybe serious mm-hmm. or deep, and uh, Santiago being maybe a little bit more festive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah so from the dancer's point of view, I always like to organize <laughs> the music. And um, from our point of view, we are always being called to dance with the first letra, which is a verse of music. We fully dance the second letra. And when the musicians want us off the stage, they sing something called a coletia, which means little tail. And it's not quite as long as a verse of music, but um, it's a clear uh, cue to exit. So we've prepared um, a sample of what a dance patada would look like here with some of the famous letras from Barrio de Santiago. So do you so mind so from Barrio de Santiago first? Yes. <laughs> seems like a very typical group of cante that is easily danced. No. So I think most dancers in Vancouver and perhaps worldwide are used to those letras from Santiago. Can we hear Ah, can we hear a patada for dance? Two letras and a coletilla from Plazuela. Plazuela, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hola, la Plazuela. Thank you. 
So from my point of view, much easier to dance the first patada than the oh, second. From my point of view, much easier <laughs> to sing than talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that um, just based on that example alone, if you could try dancing that at home, Santiago has more clues for the baile, especially if we don't speak Spanish, because it generally follows the poetic structure A-A-B-B. So we have poetry and the same lines repeated two times each in the verse of music, which is called a letra. I'd say plazuelo is more, yeah, it does Mas feel more, more heavy, more, more, yeah. Asentado means more seated, more grounded, right? Mm -hmm. But from structural point of view, analyzing like cl classical musician or dancer, you don't get the AABB structure, so then you are truly listening to the tonality of the music. Okay, so Gary, is there any difference in the type of guitar playing you're doing for Plazuela or Santiago? I mean... Not really. No, Not it's really. the same no, it's, style? It's it as guitar. Right? Mm -hmm. We picked out this music because um, we feel like that grouping of cante was typical or famous. So those are examples of um, groups of letras that you might hear together if you went to Jerez de la Frontera.